All right, here we go. This is the start of a little video I made on how to change bearings in a 12,000 RPM Haas vertical VF2 SS. Uh, I did this about a year ago on our VF3 SS. Um, I believe last that one is somewhere around a 2008 or 9 machine. This particular 2000 our VF2 SS I did um, is a 2006 or 7 somewhere in there. Um, basically, I had a bad spindle last year in a machine, um, and this is what Haas wants for a new spindle cartridge. If you look at my mouse, it's Basically, they will sell you the whole cartridge that will slip out of your spindle housing, and you slip one of these new ones in, you turn it back in for a core, they charge you $5,600, um, or almost $7,000 if you damage the core. Um, I didn't have $7,000 a drop on a new spindle, plus my HFO to install it is three hours away from me, so they charge me about $125 an hour just in drive time. So um, it's, you know, figure the math, $250, $375, you know, $700 just for them to drive to me. And then, you know, a couple hours in installation. I mean, every time they come up to my shop, um, it's easily $1,000 uh, on average, more so two thousand dollars just because of their drive time sometimes I get lucky and they're up here with a, another shop so um, me and that other shop get to split their drive time so um, that helps a little bit so the long story short is I dropped their spindle cartridge uh, looked at it and they had a cap on the nose and the cap on the back and um, I pulled the bearings out looked up the bearings online they were about two thousand dollars. I went to your trusty little eBay, threw them bearing numbers in there, and you know, lo and behold, it's like, oh, three hundred dollars for bearings. I'll do a gamble, and I will buy them and see if it works out. Um, so that's what I did. Basically, tore it apart, put some new bearings in there, and. Uh, Burned up the first pair in our VF3. We overpriced, overpressed, pressed them, gave them too heavy of a preload. Did it again a year later. Machine still runs great. Um, so now I'm doing it on a VF2. Um, so far, the two spindles are almost exactly the same. They got the same bearing numbers in them. Um, there's a upper and lower one sets that are different sizes, but they're identical so um the following little stitched together videos will be um of how to change the bearings on a haas spindle cartridge um and i wasn't gonna make this video but i was a little upset that i couldn't buy um cartridge replacement parts and in this video you'll find that this little part here that's for the drawbar, collar, coupler, whatever you want to say, um, is damaged on mine and Haas would not sell me um, via my HFO this one collar because Haas considers it part of the whole cartridge and there's no need, I mean, again, if you tear this cartridge apart, I was told by my HFO you wore you you void the core on this so if you, if you look in here let's zoom in um it says you know the exchange price is five five nine five the regular price is sixty five ninety five basically they're saying that there's a thousand dollar core on here if you crack this core open you will void that core um, my HFOs, all the techs that I've talked to over there, said they've never ever seen the inside of one of these because you just don't break open them. Um, I did because I didn't have, you know, 
fifty six hundred dollars and you know all that kind of money um, just as a caveat um, me and my old business partner in my first shop that I was in we had a bunch of older KB40A um, Kia machines 6,000 rpms and we've changed those bearings numerous times um, they had a hydraulic nut on there but Enough of all this talking, um, let's get into the videos of what we did to get these going. I'll try to put the bearing numbers in the comments if I can figure that out. This is kind of my first how-to video, um, so we'll go from there. Thank you. All right, let's see if you can hear this. This is the insides of a Haas BF2 SS 12,000 RPM spindle. Um, somewhere around 2001, 2002. Uh, I have done this to our VF3 SS and it's almost identical. Um, basically the bearings are not very good. You can see there's two large bearings here, two smaller bearings on the top. This particular one, once we got into it, we found out that the draw bar right here is all rusted up. It was really hard to take out, and we found out that this particular thing sits up on top of the spindle. <clears throat> it has some bolts that sheared off. It threads into this collar and pushes on the draw bar. I call this a draw bar pusher collar thing. Haas will not sell you this. They said it's part of the spindle cartridge. Um, just to let you know, by breaking this cartridge, we void the core. But this is it. This cap goes on the top. This is where your coupler sits and drives your spindle. This draw bar pusher collar goes on next. A line through the, these slots here. That's what pushes your draw bar. This draw bar goes in there. There's four little roller bearings that sit in there, which are grab on your retention knob. Um, at this stage of it, um, as you can see on this draw bar collar, we have a lot of fatigue on here. This blew out. The other side is on its way to blow out. I called my uh, factory outlet. <clears throat> And they will not sell me this. They said it's part of the cartridge, so I'm going to index this 90 degrees and drill and tap a bunch of another set of holes and reuse it. Um, and at this stage, we're going to take these bearings off. Um, there's a compression nut, they call it. This is compressed on. We'll slide that off. This set will come off. We'll press this collar off and then pull these bearings off and replace them. Clean everything up, lube the bore and everything good, and we will put her back together. The nice thing is Haas will send, sell me these pins for $7 a piece, but they won't sell me the collar that they go in. Because obviously from what I'm talking to the service tech is these are a fatigue point, and um, this isn't the first time they've had this issue. So I have to stick it into a mill, take an end mill, go down the middle of the hole, and then take an easy out and pull, extract them that way. Um, so this is what happens if you, your grease or your are not getting lube. Um, another point that I'll say since I have it, this is your top collar on the back of the spindle housing. There is a push to connect fitting right here. That's where your oil over mist line goes in. You have to remove that before you drop this cartridge. I'll show you the inside of the machine in a second. Um, and that's what goes through and gets your oil over mist onto your bearings and everything. This little tiny thing looked like a cap, but once I cleaned it off, it's an actual little tiny screen that was inside this hole that little tiny screen was plugged up so I am assuming for years this spindle wasn't getting any lube in it because it smells burnt um, the inside of the casing typically will have um, to 
years of uh, slimy oil in it and nothing came out it was pretty sticky we had to pound everything out this particular draw bar you can see there's build up on here that was pressed up against the casing so we have to pound that draw bar out that should just slide out um, and then we'll walk over to the machine here and I'll show you the casing <clears throat> that's my fifth axis TC TC5 or whatever they call it but the casing goes in here well there's an access port in the back here and that's where you go up and you disconnect you unscrew that push to connect fitting on that top of that cap and then you take the four bolts or six bolts out of the top and that whole cartridge will slide down and then there's you know your drive coupler and then you're through the tool coolant adapter that goes up in the middle I'll take another picture when we're getting ready to take it back in and uh, show you how all that works this particular uh, machine obviously must have either came shimmed from either when the tech installed it to my shop or factory um, I bought this machine used um, so it had some pretty bad spindle noises so we're getting ready to put it through its paces in production so I figured while well, I got bearings on the shelf we might as well swap out the bearing so I will follow this up in a little while thanks <clears throat> Alright, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but <clears throat> this is that draw bar pusher collar thing. Um, at this stage, the holes that are in there are damaged. I threw I showed you where the stress packs are. Um, I called our HFO, they will not sell me this collar, so I do what every uh, machine shop owner does, is I'm going to put another set of holes in. Um, at 90 degrees from the factory ones and see how she works. Uh, basically this is a threaded pin. Uh, the top is threaded and the bottom is through into the draw bar. It's a funky, non-common thread, according to my uh, pitch gauges and uh, trusty calibers. This is a half 20 thread, which I don't have anything for, so I'm just single point threading the top shoulder of these counterboard holes and um, uh, we, when I get the pins in a little bit uh, we'll start putting things back together. So uh, I'll stitch another video together in a little bit here. All right.